in the southern area of Indiana, right along the Ohio River, lies the city of Evansville, which we'll be looking at in this video. Take note of the population demographics here. 1900, our benchmark, our typical benchmark, 60,000 people. Um, we're about to look at a bird's eye view from 1888. So somewhere in 40,000, let's say modern day 120, so not a large city by any means. And Evansville of 1888, approximately 40,000 people according to this bird's eye view map. Looking, well, I would say much more built out than one would expect or should expect. But of course, we do expect to see this type of architecture and these size of buildings for this period of time because we are looking at the remains of the old world. Before we get into the pictures, I would like to also mention nearby Evansville, we have the Angel Mounds historical site, um, an area that they didn't start digging up really till the 30s, we were told, um, linking it with the native population of Mississippians, which apparently were long gone by the time white, white settlers arrived. So make of that what you will. There's some interesting aspects to the story, and I'll leave a link to uh, this particular video. You do see some strangeness, though, in this area. You get these walls, and then they, they tell you that the mounds were just uh, earth that was piled up um, to designate their status within the tribes of the chief had the biggest mound. So I, I don't buy any of that, but you can buy it. The researchers even admit that they're guessing on a lot of it. So, Anyway, let's get to the old buildings of Evansville, Indiana. Again, a small city, 50,000, 60,000 people at the turn of the 20th century. And manufacturing, a major part of this region. You're going to see some massive structures designated to the manufacturing of all sorts of different products. Also worth a mention early on in the video is the um, plans to build the longest canal in the world um, was, was supposedly to uh, give Evansville an economic boost, a uh, 400 mile ditch to connect the Great Lakes to Toledo, Ohio, um, with the inland rivers at Evansville. The project bankrupted the state and was so poorly engineered that it would not hold water. By the time the canal was finished, even though it bankrupted the state in 1853, the railroad had arrived, making the whole canal um, construction operation a uh, waste of time. Uh, and another ridiculous part of the historical narrative. And we see here that only two flat barges ever made that entire trip. So, interesting. And you will be looking at a surprisingly large file um from this area surprised me that's for sure for the size of the uh of the city we'll see this again this is supposedly a construction photo of the uh, courthouse i'll move on we'll talk about that a little later and evansville um, experienced a flood the flood of 1937 Affected apparently over 500 city blocks, we are told. You're going to get a lot of these uh, uh, renderings of just massive structures. This is a six story structure. And you can see how large it is. I know they're renderings, but they must be depicting something that existed. The massive smokestacks. Keep in mind again the population as well. This is a demolition of an old church. 
in one of the sanitariums. We're calling this one the sanitarium. We'll take a look at the asylum now. This is actually a massive structure. I'll show you. There you can see an aerial view of how that was put together. You have to wonder how many bodies you throw at a, at a construction site like this. And they tell us construction began in 1888 on this, completed in 1890, and they demolished this between 2002 and 2008. So in modern day it took six years to demolish, but it only took them two years in the 1800s to build this thing. Silly, 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 silly parts of the narrative. Uh, Citizens Bank, National Citizens Bank. There we have the interior, very grainy. Apologies for that, but you still see what looks to me like brickwork on the ceilings. Very, very difficult to pull that off, or especially over such a large span. Talk to any engineer about spans and and uh, how difficult all of that type of uh, architecture would be to to design and construct. We have an old bank here, very grainy, but as I like to do, I, I throw everything I have at you for the region that I like to feature in these videos, just so you have access to these visuals as well. And again, we're looking at the size of the structures in many of these renderings. And of course, they have the horses and buggies all busy out front. I have this as a business association. Um, again, if you are from the region or know more about the region, please feel free to throw your two cents and or your corrections in the comment section. I'm no expert on the areas that I feature. I'm just trying to bring you the visuals and a little bit of the details that I found. I like to try to uh, scour the landscape, bringing you visuals, all the similarities of what I like to call the old world. This is a brewery, cook brewery. There it is. Not quite looking the same. Um, we're from the 1800s again, and you just look at the vastness of this uh, structure. Really uh, quite something. Yet another brewery. Evansville Brewery. There's, there's quite a brewery narrative attached to this uh, area as well, as you can see. It would have to be with the, these massive structures. Here we have an Evansville Brewing trademark. Of course, the streetcars, in effect, as they are in every location we look at, even though the technology itself was really just short lived, phased out by the um, internal combustion engine automobile. Carnegie Library, one of many. Over 2,000, I believe, uh, Carnegie Libraries went up. I did do a video on Andrew Carnegie as uh, one of the robber barons and one of the uh, one of the major players or placeholders in the resetting of the narrative, education-wise and industry-wise. This is very interesting, unique tech on top of this house. Alright, 1889, remember about 40,000 people. And we've got numerous churches built to this level of beautification. And I have suggested in many videos that when you see these flat top towers on these structures, I think where they've been scaled down, many of them admit they've been scaled down. They'll attribute that to a rapid deterioration, um, weather events like tornadoes, hurricanes, snowstorms, things like that. And that being the reason why so many of these were decapitated. What I think is more, it's uh, a covering up of the architecture of, of the old world.
And I think so many of us are either on the uh, um, open mind, um, turning our backs on conventional um, knowledge, understanding that there's a deception um, that's occurred, or you are digging your heels in and defending the, the historical narrative. It seems to be where we're at here in society. I, I, I suggest that we are living through a time where everything we know is being turned on its head. No, I'm not I'm not a religious person in any way, but I would suggest uh, the word biblical to describe our times is probably pretty accurate if you understand. Um, meaning something larger than we can really comprehend is going on right now in this period of time. Of course, the last three years have been um, bigger than anything we've really experienced as far as how that transpired. And now we are getting to sort of open up a lot of things that were sealed, I think, in our minds as we question uh, those in power, those with authority, understanding that uh, there is, has so often been an intent to deceive. Really no shortage of these church structures, is there? St. Boniface Cathedral. This is also a church, Presbyterian, Washington Avenue Presbyterian. Almost mistook it for a, for a mansion, but uh, calling it a church. Here we have the city hall. And this is from historicevansville.com. But you can see here, this is a good example of what they do to these structures over time. Right, you can see it's been decapitated from here. And that's a, a bit of a better look at it. Just give you an idea of uh, what it may have looked like. All right, here's here's a modern day picture of the Colosseum, and then an older photo it gives you an idea of the weight of the architecture. College, Evansville College, sporting old world architecture, almost having a bit of a cathedral look. Yet another bi businessmen's association. This may be that same structure we saw earlier on. And this is the Cook Brewing again. Demolished in 1965, the structure, massive structure, multi-storied, uh, looking half demolished here already. This must be a well there, well on their way to doing the demolition. Yet again, this photo from 1915, supposedly maybe construction photo, reconstruction photo. Everything back here looking like it's all. Well intact, brick in the foreground, looking old. Okay, let's jump to the courthouse. Uh, this is the Vandenberg County Courthouse, built the same years as the uh, asylum, 1888 to 1890. So they must have been had workers going back and forth and choosing which structure they wanted to work on. All, of course, very highly skilled workers. This building cost $379,450 to build. Not a penny more, not a penny less. They were doing this type of stuff in Evansville, Indiana in the 1890s or 1880s. Really? Hmm. Apparently it features a bell, courthouse bell, 4,500 4, pound bell, 200 kilogram in the tower. Of course it does, because it's Evansville. Evansville giving us this type of look here. If I just if I just showed you this picture, could you really guess that we're looking at Evansville, Indiana? Or this? 
There's so much symbol symbolism going on here. Very interesting. And a beautiful structure. Beautiful structure. All right. Crescent Furniture Company, very large. We have the Delaware School. I know, very uh, hazy photograph, but you still get a sense of the architecture turret here. And of course, we have the Eagles, Fraternal Organization of Eagles. There's your eagle present in Evansville. I believe we're looking at the library here, the Willard Library. We'll see that later on in the photograph as well. An Elks home this time, the Eagles and the Elks, present in Evansville. A beautifully constructed hall here. Are these statues on either side of the entrance. A lot of circular windows down the side. Interesting. All right, more factories. Apparently, uh, hardwood furniture manufacturing, a major part of Evansville, Indiana. Coming into the 20th century. Ice houses, freezing tanks, cold storage, interesting. This is the old press, Evansville's press building. Looking like maybe it's been scaled back. Hard to say. Could be. This could be a new world reproduction, but there's a bit of detail. And of course, you have these in the background just poking their heads up. And since it is such a large file, I'll try to move quickly. The fairgrounds, even building such a structure as this, is quite a feat. Just the roof portion is quite a feat. But then you have it under, on over bleachers. Quite a feat. Another church, the First Baptist. Alright. Another brewery you may have seen. There might be a few double ups on the breweries. But just massive, massive structures though. Remember, we only have, what, 50,000 people in Evansville? At the turn of the century? Well, correction, 59,000, census says. I like also we can see the brick paved streets. This looking like a, almost a herringbone pattern. That's pretty detailed work as well. Very skilled. Skilled hands would have to be involved with that. Hard to wrap your head around even the size of this whole complex here. Especially when you put it in through the, into the lens of the 1800s. The amount of time it would have taken, the amount of workers it would have taken. Of course, we're not getting a lot of looks at the interior of so many of these structures. One of my main arguments these days being, why aren't we seeing more of an attempt to preserve at least the visuals? Why do they tear down an opera house but leave us with no visuals of the interior? these grandiose opera houses. Speaking of theaters, here we have the Grand Opera House. There it is. You can really see the adornment of uh, the nodal points here. I wonder if they're out, this thing lit up. It's possible. And we do have an interior shot that slipped through the cracks, no doubt. Interesting. Beautiful. Difficult. 1800s. Very difficult to pull this type of work off. Look at the detail here. Hmm. This is a machine works. Heilman Machine Works, 1898. Heilman Plow Works. Now this is a good one. And we saw this in the bird's eye, briefly. But you can see the adornment on the corners. So I suggest a lot of what we're seeing in the with those industrial buildings is that the de decapitation of possibly the, uh, the upper portion of the old buildings. And then they'll just frame across and put, put on a flat roof. 
and then it ends up just looking rectangular like these. It's very possible that that's what's going on. The Deaconess Hospital. And this would be the Protestant Deaconess Hospital and Nurses Home. Different structure. Again, if you're local and can help clarify, please do. This is the St. Mary's Hospital. 1960, it was raised. 1894, built. Let's get through a couple hotels, all showing that sort of horseshoe magnet look. This one, anyway, not all, sorry. Hotel McCurdy. St. George Hotel, fairly grainy. There's a better version. The Vendome Hotel in the early 1920s. No, not looking like a whole lot, right? Why, why, why would I assume this is part of an old world civilization? There's not much going on. Well, we look at the interior uh, and the level of finish on the interiors, and that's part of the reason. This would be the lobby for that uh, hotel. I wish I knew what this one was, but this is looking like so many typical old world structures that we see. The Itchenhauser. Ickenhauser making toys and holiday goods. This is Indiana Bell Company. I assume that's a telephone. It's pretty detailed looking that that deco styling. The street light looking very much uh, typical of what I've seen in my uh, my research. If you want to call it research, I know some of pe some people don't want to call it research, but there's an amount of digging involved. That's for sure. This is the jail slash sheriff's home. You're told. Um, I don't even know if I want to try to pronounce this. Uh, Keikel Brantano and Oberdorfer manufacturers. Stoves and range, built it like a castle. Wanted to be reminded of their of the old country. I thought I'd throw this one in as well. This is the these were the suppliers of the stone, marble, and granite. Lannert and Rickwood, contractors and dealers. God, they must have been busy back then. They must have been cutting stone at a at a rapid pace for all these buildings that were going up. There you see the Willard Library again in the background. Here it is, modern day. Who in their right mind decides to build a library in the late 1800s in such a fashion? Like all you really need to do is store books, right? There you can see the lower lower reaches of the structure. So there's a lot, lack of logic involved in this. There was just such a massive amount of books in Evansville that they needed to build a multi-storied structure with a basement. Very grainy cotton, cotton mill. Um, I don't have this. Is just it just says Main Street. Maybe there's a bank there. I think we'll see that again. Just trying to feature. I really want to illustrate the the massive amount of of structures I found in Evansville. Very difficult to uh, understand and wrap your head around why such a small population would. Uh, be building these things at such a rapid pace and then with such a the the speed at which these things went up a short period of time and then the um the decoration that that they uh, received neither of those those two things contradict each other those two uh, aspects of the narrative contradict each other okay this is why we're asking questions if we see one inconsistency then the assumption is that there are more we see two inconsistencies, you can pretty much guarantee there's a deception going on. This is supposedly metal furniture. Just huge complexes, really. So what, I mean, what would you expect if, for a place that uh, is uh, known for the hard, it's hardwood, do you think you'd see more, uh, maybe more wood construction? 
So apparently the old courthouse. 1873 sketch of the old courthouse. They always try to say that uh, these were torn down and another old world building was built in that spot. I think it's a way to cover up the uh, cover up the uh, deception or to aid in the deception. Say, well, that can't be a that can't be from a previous civilization. That can't be 200 years old because it was built on the spot where that building was. I think it's old. Misdirection, deception. YMCA. Hmm. Really? You're gonna build a YMCA like that? Okay. Ah, we get back to the orphans. The orphans' home. Now, if you're digging into this field of research and you've come across the orphan trains and the uh, infant incubators and the um, foundling wheels that were so common, you maybe are getting a picture of uh, how that reset and spreading of the, of the population was achieved. And yet another or, um, orphan asylum, because you needed to have orphans asylumed. <laughs> you needed to have a lot of the adults asylumed. <laughs> it, the picture becomes clear. Again, we see that this is, this is a supposed construction photo of the uh, of that courthouse, that magnificent courthouse I showed you. This is the early stages of, of that, we are told. Looks like quite a mess to me. You, you, when you look at that structure, you look at that mess of construction and then you look at this structure as the final product. Does it does, does that really make sense at all? Does does it make sense that such a um, culture that could create this also takes little care in their uh, in that work site? And by the end they're making something with this decoration on it. And we jump back again to the construction photo. So these are things you need. These are questions you need to be asking. Really, does this make sense for? And we need to ask it because it doesn't make sense. Quite clearly, it doesn't make sense. This is the post office. This one still stands, and it's quite something. Now, when it's grainy like this, you still get a sense of the old world um, architecture, but it really jumps out at you. When, you, when these things survive down to the modern day, you see that uh, what, salmon granite um, column, which repeats itself in a lot of the old world architecture. But really, this is really something, something special, this building. Very interesting. Really hope they don't tear that down or it doesn't burn up in a fire like so many things are these days. furniture factory hmm. repurposed building I think the C and EI passenger station with the four columns out front and the circular windows yeah just the just the volume just the the amount of old world architecture in Evansville really really caught me by surprise I would love a little more texture to the story if anyone has anything to throw in. Any experiences of growing up in Evansville or any of that kind of stuff. Really enjoy those comments. Okay, the Rookery. multi storied building. 1888. I really wish they would start building schools again with the cupolas and the bell towers. I mean, it should be easier for us to do than it was for them. High school. We have a business college very early, early on us also. Probably, that's possibly the YMCA building that we saw in the photograph earlier. school Central High School 
They really loved their bell towers, didn't they? Again, must have been so easy for them to do. Delaware School. Says here, 1896, thank God they've put the date on the front of the building, so now we can forever know when this was constructed. Just a sketch of another school. Old Central School, they're telling us. There's the tower again of the Central School we saw from the other angle. And that's really giving you a, a real feel and sense of age. The bottom portion here and then how clean the brick and how well it uh, preserved over time. You can also see here, here some interesting indentations. Some detailing in the brickwork itself. Really no reason to do that. No functional reason as far as, uh, or practical reason let's say, to our eye, to our mind. This is apparently the, uh, the, the pho a photograph of the rendering of that old central school that we just saw. Very grainy. School yet again, we're being told. There's a tower right there. Really hard to tell, there's just so many buildings around. Hard to tell what we're looking at sometimes in these. Doesn't take much to uh, have your eye drawn in another direction. Catholic school, of course a bell tower, just to bring the kids in from recess and lunchtime to let them know that it's school's out for the day. Again that uh, the jail we saw earlier, you can see actually the entrance down to the lower level here. Very heavy on the manufacturing in this region. Ohio River. I did just do a video on Louisville, which is not far away from uh, Evansville. No doubt that entire region uh, riddled with old world architecture and infrastructure. I think the uh, railway lines and the canals all a part of the old world infrastructure that was used. And if you don't believe me, you can dig in a little further. Uh, there's a lot to a lot to be discovered. It all hasn't been discovered, and um, there's much more to the story than we've been told. I suggest St. Mary's Monastery. Beautiful structure. Interesting too. I always, uh, always have to wonder about the uh, awnings that they put on these windows. Were they resistant to the sunlight? Did they have something against it? Hmm. Another library. What are they calling it? The Stanley Hall. Used as a library. Fancy drag. Of course, it's going to be fancy drag goods. If the building is fancy, that's letting you know. Circular windows down the side. Just a couple examples of the residences to be found in Evansville. They don't really do. They don't really add the turrets on the buildings anymore, do they? Because it's very difficult to build in such a manner and expensive. All right, the train station once again. Another train station, the L and N train depot. Smacks of old world. You get the rounded tops. It's definitely reminding me of a lot of what I saw in Louisville. All right, coming to the end of the file. A lot of uh, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of churches, um, but no shortage of old world splendor and majesty in Evansville, Indiana. I did not expect it. Um, I don't know what you expected and I hope you were surprised and I also hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.